Well, this year, the heat wave has come very early. Normally, we get heat waves in May or June, and the monsoon, which arrives in India at the beginning of June, provides some relief. But this year, the heat wave has come early. Schools are still open. They're not yet closed for the summer vacations. In terms of farming, the soil is at its driest. So it's really uh, a time when people are not normally prepared for these kinds of temperatures. Uh, the other difference is the duration. It has gone on for a very long time. Now, are these heat waves expected to get worse over time? And if so, how bad are we talking here? It's hard to say, really. There, is, there are really two factors going on over here. One is that we have what is called the urban heat island effect. We are building up more areas, you know, which used to be green or, or just lakes and water bodies. But the other is the longer term effect of climate change. Uh, the IPCC's report tells us that the number of days which are more than 35 degrees Celsius in a year could go up by 50 or 60 days more. So this is something that definitely is to be concerned about because what you're talking about is more days of extreme heat temperature without relief. Also warmer nights when you know uh, people who are working out in the field, um, according to, in fact, a recent estimate, half of India's population works outside in fields or factories or construction labor. So this is something that is really something that we need to prepare for as we go forward. Just on that point, on a global scale, India is said to be one of the most heat stressed nations in the world and the economic harm that will come to it as a result is said to be worse than in other countries. Until now, what has the Indian government done nationally to combat this? So definitely on the heat action plans, there was one city called Ahmedabad, which came up with a heat action plan about 10 years ago. And since then, about 20 other cities have followed suit. So uh, in terms of providing emergency medical relief, providing shelter, schooling, there are plans. But if we recognize that this is a problem that's being caused by climate change, then the fact that India is warmed by a degree Celsius, this is because of emissions that have happened in the past from the developed countries. So I would argue that the best form of combating this problem is for all countries to try to reduce their emissions as urgently as possible. Obviously, this is not easy. It will take time. But it really, there is no other way around it. In the short term, what countries like India can do is make sure that we leave enough space for nature in our cities and we leave a little room for the way we build, um, uh, build our buildings and infrastructure so that there is a way to cope with the extreme heat. The, the climate crisis affects basically every area of government policy. What do you think is the most pressing concern that needs attention immediately? You've mentioned a few there, but what, what other directions can they go in? Well, obviously, the most important one that has been at the top of everybody's minds is the need to replace fossil fuel energy by renewable sources of electricity. Now, as you would know, India doesn't have very large domestic reserves of oil and gas. Uh, you know, uh, it doesn't have any nuclear. It is 2% of electricity comes from nuclear. So bulk of our electricity right now comes from coal. And we're a developing economy. A lot of the electricity required for lighting, for cooling, for our factories, uh, you know, all of this, even from transport, is going to come from uh, fossil fuel electricity unless, as we are doing, uh, increase the amount of renewable capacity. Now, this is planned to be increased three times to 500 gigawatts in just under 10 years. But again, uh, a lot of this depends on a lot of things happening uh, in terms of financing, in terms of the right policies to be in place. Uh, but I would argue that that's really one of the most important. And there have been calls for India to also address problems surrounding its most vulnerable citizens who are at higher risk from these conditions. So we're talking senior citizens, the urban poor, outdoor workers that you mentioned earlier. H how can this be done? So India is a very large country and a lot of this kind of implementation needs to happen at a very local scale. So not just state governments, but district governments, cities and even villages. I mean, just to give you a simple example, at a village scale, you need to provide fodder and water for livestock, which you know becomes very scarce when there is a drought like or a heat wave situation. So a lot of requirement of empowering the local levels of government, uh, but city action plans definitely that take into account not just the current heat wave, but also the risk of these kinds of episodes increasing and becoming more and more frequent. And the, really the need to integrate across different departments. As you said yourself, you know, climate change affects every walk of life. 
So we need departments that don't necessarily traditionally be uh, involved in climate change uh, impacts, uh, climate change policy implementation. So the health department, the biodiversity department, the urban development department, all of these need to work together and come up with an integrated plan. And what about the agricultural sector? Because farmers in India have, have been raising their voices a lot as of late. Are there any additional measures that can be put in place to help them as well? So farming is, of course, in India, uh, almost entirely rain-fed. About two-thirds of our farming depends on the rainfall. So any change in the onset date of the monsoon, in the way a farmer has planned their uh, irrigation patterns, all of it could have major implications. Just today, we heard from the food secretary that wheat uh, production is likely to be down 5% as a result of this heat wave. Tomato cultivation is in the news a lot uh, because the prices have gone up. Uh, so definitely there are problems. I think what is really required is policies to conserve water and soil and also to connect farmers with markets so that they're able to get better prices. Well, Kukelka, we appreciate your time. Thank you very much for speaking with us. Thank you.